I'm sure you've already read the title, so let's get to it. Step 1. Refer to your water cooler's manual. Step 2. Happy overclocking. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with this. No, we're not, we're not done? I thought we were done. I'm just kidding. Okay. Problem came up when I was installing this NCXT Kraken X31. I had never installed a water cooler like this one before, so I opened up the manual and uh, this is it. I mean, literally. Uh, it's, it's one page and it consists of eight steps. Eight steps to install a water cooler and they're really not even, they're not even, there's no writing. It's just pictures and the pictures are not good at all. This is a terrible manual for anyone who has not installed a water cooler before. You will be completely lost unless you have assistance or you're just really good at puzzles because that's basically what that thing is. So this video is dedicated specifically to the NZXT Kraken X31, but I'm going to expand this to most all-in-one water coolers in general, including the Corsair H90, which I featured in a previous build. You can check that video out right here if you haven't already. These are all very, uh, very similar. This is a 140 millimeter radiator water cooler. Uh, and this one is a 120 millimeter, uh, but the process is roughly the same regardless of the regardless of the company that you choose to go with uh, to cool your CPU. So let's jump right into those steps. Stay tuned. First thing is first, gather the massive materials that you'll need in order to complete this task. You will need the following, your radiator of course with the attached water block and mess of cables, the screws, bolts, and risers that correspond to your socket type, in our case the LG1151 socket, the corresponding backplate for your system, a screwdriver kit, and if you're removing an old cooler, some pure or near pure isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free cloth, unless you're a rebel like myself, and use tissue paper instead, which I actually don't recommend. Before anything else, take off the front and back panels of your case. If you're removing a previously installed heatsink, pay special attention to these next few steps. However, if you're putting together your PC for the first time, click the link in this video now to skip ahead. You really don't need to see this part. If you're using the stock cooler in particular, first unplug the three or four pin fan from its header. It should be the only set of wires coming from the cooler. Gently twist the four pins holding the unit in place and then pull up on each lever until the cooler is released. Set it to the side for now. Next, we'll need to clean the old thermal paste from the heat spreader of your CPU. Grab the isopropyl alcohol and your lint-free cloth or a few folded sheets of tissue paper, pop the cap open, hold the cloth, etc. firmly over the bottle's opening, and then shake up and down until a small amount of alcohol has soaked the fabric. Then run the lightly soaked cloth over the thermal paste atop the CPU heat spreader. Be sure that the alcohol is not running down the fabric and onto any other components within your system. Repeat the process a few times until the CPU heat spreader is once again completely shiny and completely dry. At this point, we'll want to assemble the water cooling unit. Grab the radiator, the included fan, and the set of long extended screws. We'll be utilizing the push method here, so we'll want to orient our fan in such a way that it pushes air through the radiator fins. If you're a bit confused about which direction air will flow through the fan, an arrow on the side of the fan's frame may be available to indicate airflow direction. Secure the fan into place with the included four screws. If you're using a radiator with more than one included fan, install these as well. Be sure that the fan is secured in such a way that its lead wires won't be in odd positions when the radiator is finally mounted to the PC chassis. Following, take the fastener corresponding to your CPU socket type, square thread pattern for Intel and rectangle for AMD typically, and latch it to the base of the water block, if it isn't already there. It should lock after a simple rotation. Pick up the corresponding bracket and secure it from behind your motherboard. Once the four pins are poking through the PCB, grab the support screws that have equal lengths on either side. If you're using a cooler that isn't an NZXT Kraken cooler, this might be where things begin to differ a bit. But don't worry, I'm sure your user manual is much better than mine. Double check the connection types and secure the support screws into the four pins. At this point, the back plate should be loosely secured. Grab a hold of your kit's included thermal paste if it isn't already pre-applied to the base of your water block or some third-party grease if you've got any on hand. Any of these will do just fine. If you're applying manually, be sure to dab only a sliver of the paste atop the CPU directly at its center. It should be rather sticky, so doing this while the PC is standing upright shouldn't be a problem. But just to be safe, you may want to do this with the computer lying flat. Next, we need to mount the radiator and secure it to the PC's chassis. Using the smaller set of screws that correspond to the holes at the back of your radiator, fasten it to the fan mounting point of your choice, preferably at the front or back. I'll be mounting mine to the back of the NZXT S340. Once the radiator and fan are secured, grab the opposite end of the AIO cooler, the water block, and align the fastener with the support screws. 
Slide the block on top of the CPU through the supports, and while holding the block in place, use the larger thumb screws to sandwich the entire assembly together. I don't recommend using a screwdriver to fasten these thumb screws, as any unwanted stress could actually fracture the plastic backplate, and that's a big no-no. Just turn them with your fingers until the screws themselves build up a significant resistance. This should be done in a cross pattern for relatively equal force distribution. Double check that your pipes are routed appropriately and ensure that no cable leads are wrapped up in circuit components or fans or anything like that. Grab the shortest cable lead, the one with the either 3 or 4 pin connection holes, and plug it into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. The longer cable on the Kraken is for the USB support for use with NZXT's CAM software, so run this down the back of your tower and plug it into the USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. Route the cable sprouting from your radiator's fan and plug it into any chassis fan header on your motherboard, but even a CPU header would do just fine. After double and triple checking connections and cable pipe routes, reassemble your front and back panels and turn on your computer. Let it run by itself at idle for a few minutes, and then for a few more minutes under a full load to ensure that no leaks are present within the loop. Some of these leaks won't show up until the liquid begins moving very quickly. They're altogether rare and all-in-ones like this one, but it never hurts to double check. After all, water damage to any of your components in a system like this one will likely not be covered by any warranty. Oh, and don't forget about that old cooler if it's now just sitting by itself. Store it in a box for later, just in case. If your water cooler does happen to die at some point, you'll want a temporary backup. So there you have it folks, as you can see, not very complicated at all. I would say that the most difficult part about installing an all-in-one water cooling unit is just finding what parts you need and what parts you don't. Some systems come with many different kits, you know, for different socket types. You have AM3 Plus and, and LJ1151 and LJ2011 V3. You have a lot of different socket types, so you'll naturally have a lot of different parts for a water cooler that is universal, that is, it can be used on any socket type. Uh, so once you have sorted through those parts and figured out which ones you need in particular, it's fairly straightforward. Just follow this guide or uh, follow your manual if it's a good one. Don't follow something like this. I mean, you can try, but it's this is just terrible. They shouldn't even include one if they're if they're going to just just completely drop the ball like that. So if you guys like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it for whatever reason, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what you would like to see improved in future videos and what you would like to see just in general content-wise on the channel. If you have suggestions for future videos or constructive criticism, or maybe you want to just brag about your cool water-cooled PC, be sure to leave all of those comments in the comment section below as well. Remember, I read every comment that you all post. I appreciate them all. Thanks so much for being a great community. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.